and welcome to Edison TV. I'm Vivian Parry. Today our spotlight is once again on Incanex Healthcare, the Australian company developing scientifically validated cannabinoid combination products and psychedelic medicines for areas of unmet medical need. Incanex's currently product in development is called IHL42X, a novel cannabinoid combination which has been formulated to treat obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, an increasingly common condition which is poorly treated. Proof of concept trials for the product have shown encouraging results, but the commercialization of IHL42X will depend on it receiving FDA approval. To explain more about the treatment, how it works, and the pathway to its validation, I'm delighted that Incanex CEO Joel Latham and the company's Chief Scientific Officer, Dr. Mark Bleakley, are here with me. Welcome to you both. Pleasure to be here, Vivian. Thanks, Vivian. Now let's get down to some basics. Mark, I want to start with you. Tell us what this condition is and how it's currently diagnosed and treated. So obstructive sleep apnea is a disease of sleep disordered breathing. It often presents or it usually presents to the patient as, as excessive snoring and, and repeatedly waking up in the night gasping for air. And what's actually happening is the upper airway is collapsing either partially or completely. That leads to reduced or cessations in airflow during sleep, decreased oxygen uptake, and that leads to poor sleep quality. This leads to the, the obvious consequence of excessive daytime sleepiness, which then has an impact on mood and function the next day and puts the patients at an increased risk of traffic accident. Those are the immediate consequences, but when we look at the long-term consequences, these patients also have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and mental health issues. So this is not just about snoring, you know, d disturbing sleep. It actually has consequences that can be fatal. Oh, exactly. And, and that, that effect on, on traffic accidents is obviously not just limited to the patients with sleep apnea. You look at, at, at obviously the other people involved in those accidents, but also these patients with sleep apnea, it's affecting their, their bedmates. So the snoring and the waking up gasping for air has an impact on their sleep quality as well, which has this, this, the same effects in terms of mood and function the next day and could actually impact their ability to drive safely as well. So just briefly, Mark, how do you diagnose and treat? So sleep apnea is diagnosed using overnight sleep studies. So the patients will go into a sleep clinic. They'll be connected to a selection of medical devices that monitor things like brain activity, breathing. And there's actually a microphone to, to monitor snoring. And so they'll, they'll sleep overnight and then have the, the data collected by sleep scientists who then analyze that data to look at the number of apneas and hypopneas, which is per, happen per hour, and that's known as the AHI, or the apnea hypopnea index. The higher the AHI, the worse the sleep apnea. Then the treatment? So currently, the, the treatments are, are devices and surgery. The, the gold standard device is a positive airway pressure device, and this pumps air into the upper airway through the mouth and nose, and actually pneumatically splints open the airway, so, so it's mechanically maintaining that airway being open. And the, the sort of second line would be dental devices. These are sort of mouth guard type devices that actually bring the bottom jaw forward and that prevents the upper airway collapse that way. The last line of treatment and sort of that, that last resort seems to be surgery where patients are actually going in and having tissue removed from their upper airway to try and keep it open during the night or having their jaws broken and brought forward sort of in a similar manner as the mouth guards bringing that bottom jaw forward and maintaining airway patency that way. So pretty drastic and unpleasant treatments. Now, Incanex's mission is to focus on unmet medical needs. Can you explain why OSA falls into this category? And so there's a few reasons why, why I will say is an unmet medical need. The main one is, is that patients just don't tolerate the devices that are currently used to treat the disease very well. So when we look at positive airway pressure or CPAP devices, even when patients are provided with these devices, only about half of them actually continue to use them to actually actively treat their disease. And you see similar, similar patient uh, compliance with the, with the dental devices. So these devices, they bring your jaw forward, they, they can be quite uncomfortable. So even if they're provided to that patient, they're not actually getting the effect because they're not using the device. And presumably because of the rise in obesity, which is one of the particular triggers for this, you're seeing a, a, a really dramatically increasing prevalence too. 
For sure. And I think that obviously the obesity is a major comorbidity with obstructive sleep apnea. This is because the increased mass around the neck actually narrows the airway. But we're also seeing an increased recognition of the importance of sleep in, in everyday health. So IHL 42X is in fact two drugs. So what is it about this cannabinoid uh, combination product that makes it effective? And what does it do? So IHL 42X is a combination of dronabinol, which is a synthetic form of THC, and acetazolamide, which is our carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Both of these drugs independently have clinical evidence to support that they're actually capable of reducing the incidence of apnea and hypopnea, so reducing the AHI in patients with sleep apnea. But that level is it reduces by about 30%. And we also understand how these two drugs work. So dronabinol is, is activating muscles in the upper airway and preventing that airway collapse whereas acetazolamide is affecting something called loop gain, which is effectively changing the body's threshold based on CO2 concentrations in the blood for inducing a breath. So you need less CO2 in your blood to induce a breath. So you're breathing more, more quickly, and you're not having a chance to actually have that cessation in breathing. So the hypothesis that, that Inconex is, was working with and the reason that we developed IHL-42X is having these two separate mechanisms of action gave us the potential to have a synergistic effect on AHI. So the sum of the parts would be greater than predicted based on the activity of each drug alone. And we've confirmed this in our proof of concept clinical trial. So we saw synergistic activity of the two drugs on AHI. And this was a really exciting result for us, both because it, it confirmed our hypothesis, but it also forms the foundation of our IP position for IHL 42X. That's fascinating. Really, really interesting. Joel, can I bring you in here? Uh, OSA is a really serious condition, but it often presents with heavy snoring. There are a million over-the-counter devices offering treatment and so-called cures uh, out there. But how do you persuade a skeptical medical establishment that your product is genuinely of value? Well, Vivian, I agree. It's a, it's a serious condition. And for us to persuade a skeptical medical establishment, we're developing IHL 42X with the scientific rigour required to have a drug approved with the major health regulators, particularly with the FDA, who we've been working quite closely with over the past two years. And we're scaling into large trials to continue to prove safety and efficacy. There are no registered pharmaceutical options available to patients, and the current treatment options have an extremely high drop-off rate. So we're supremely confident in the product that we've developed, uh, the results that we've received, and it has been received well by the broader medical community at this early stage. What do you believe the addressable market is, and what's the evidence for your calculations? So looking at the literature base analyst reports, um, we're looking at approximately 936 million people uh, across the globe suffering from obstructive sleep apnea, which then relates to a $10 billion annual addressable market. My personal opinion is that's a that's a conservative number. Given that OSA is, goes largely undiagnosed, I, I think that the, the, the true number could even be 20% higher. So this just goes to show if we continue to have success in the clinic and with the regulators, there is a significant commercial opportunity we have here. And where are you currently in terms of your trials? We completed a proof of concept phase two study earlier this year. Um, very, very pleased with the results. Uh, our most efficacious dose um, on average reduced the AHI by 50.7%. And we even had 20% of patients have a greater than 80% reduction in AHI. So this was truly, truly remarkable results. But importantly for us, IHL 42X was well tolerated across the board. So the next phase for us is we're completing a bioavailability and a bioequivalence study in Australia, and we expect to start patient recruitment in early 2023. And this trial will have just over 100 patients. In parallel, Mark and the team are drafting our filing to, to be able to file our IND with the FDA, and we expect that to be filed uh, in Q1 2023. Once opened, we will be commencing pivotal phase two, phase three clinical trials, and we're looking at potentially 20 to 30 sites across North America and Europe. Um, and we're looking at 400 patients in this study. So it's, they're, they're, there are quite large studies. I, I can hear your enthusiasm about this product, Joel, uh, but 
Can you describe the key to your mission with IHL 42X and indeed your other products in development? What's at the heart of the Inconex business case that you think is going to drive commercial success and, of course, value for investors? So what's at the heart and the mission for our business is the same across all of our assets. We have two key pillars. The first is patient focus. We want to develop novel therapies and treatments to make a difference in the lives of millions of patients suffering from the conditions um, that, we're, that we're treating. So there's an opportunity there for us to make a real difference. And then the second pillar is we're very shareholder focused. We want to drive shareholder value in the near, the mid and the long term. I believe we've done that to date and we're going to continue to do this, particularly given that we have de-risked IHL 42X with our positive phase two results and we are now disrupting a multi-billion dollar OSA market. So we're, we, we are completely changing the way patients could be treated in the future with a far more convenient and efficacious treatment. So we look forward to progressing IHL 42X uh, during 2023. Uh, we have a lot on the agenda, many updates to provide the market with, along with our other exciting assets that we will be running in parallel who are disrupting their own markets in their individual fields. Well, thanks very much to you both, Joel and Mark. It's a really exciting time for Inconnex. I can see that. And we look forward to hearing more about your progress in the new year. Now, if you'd like to find out more about Incanex Healthcare, its investment case, and their journey with IHL 42X, do read Edison's latest research updates, and you can also follow their stock on the Edison website. Thanks so much for joining us. Until the next time.